Yes, a very good morning to all of you. Right, so I hope audio, video, all good. You're all able to listen to me and also able to see me. Right, all of you who have connected for the class on time. And with that, it's a warm welcome to all of you for the CA Intermediate Auditing and Ethics Patch. Right, so if you could just confirm if audio, video is all good. Yes, on the chat box. Okay, right. So with that, yes, let's have our roller coaster right into the subject of auditing. Right. So kaise chal rahi hai preparations? You've thought about a fast track revision badge. So pehle revision karna hai, fir study karoge ya already you've studied it or ab revision karna hai. Okay, right. So whatever be the case, hum to pura syllabus, right? We will try to cover the entire syllabus and develop our confidence and also the confidence over the conceptual clarity and also the using of the correct terms, right? For preparing for our, our CA inter audit. Okay, right. What has been one of the latest findings which have come around for the intermediate audit, Right, by looking at the MTPs which were there for a particular attempt. What has been the finding? Earlier we thought that there will be MCQs in the paper. Then after that we will have the correct and correct in the paper. Right, so yeah, we'll have the MCQ. Then after that the correct and correct. And then after that the theory part of the paper. This was the original thought process. Right, this is how the breakup of the 100 marks was anticipated. But then realized that, oh, this correct and correct is nowhere seen in the MTPs and in the, the RTPs of the ICAI now. So that is why now this is not going to be there in the paper. Yes, and then after that, so now you'll have the MCQ for the 30 marks and then the theory for the 70 marks over there, right? You'll have the theory for the 70 marks over there. Right, so now it says 30 marks of the MCQ in which will 15 marks or 20 marks will be like the integrated case studies, right? Two, two markers over there. And then one, one marker would be for the general MCQs, right? And then over here, we have the theory part of the paper. Okay, right. Now in audit, if I overall try to understand the subject of CA intermediate, the auditing and ethics, Right? That's the name of the subject. Earlier, it used to be auditing and assurance. Now, it is auditing and ethics. Right? So, going in line with the institute study material, we have the 11 chapters in the syllabus. And so what are these 11 chapters that we have in our syllabus? Chapter number one, which is regarding the nature, objective and the scope of audit. Right? The nature, objective and then also after that, the scope of the audit. Right. Then after that, we have the chapter on the audit planning, right? the audit strategy and the audit program. Right. So audit planning, audit strategy and the audit program. Right. That is the chapter number two in Institute study material as well as in our books also. Right. Then after that, we have the chapter number three, which is one of the very dynamic chapter over there, which is regarding the risk assessment and the internal control. Right. So big discussion over there regarding the risk based audit approach and also regarding the internal control. Then chapter number four, which is regarding the audit evidence. Right, the audit evidence, right? So a lot of the standards of the 500 series covered over here. Right, then after that, the chapter number five, which is regarding the audit of the items of the financial statements, right? So how to do the audit of the items of the financial statements, right? Then chapter number six, which is regarding the audit documentation right the audit documentation chapter number seven which is regarding the completion and review right the completion and the review then chapter number eight which is regarding the audit report right chapter number eight which is regarding the audit report then after that chapter number nine which is regarding the special features of the audit of right or the special aspects of the 
audit of different types of entities, right? So we have the 14 different types of entities which we are going to talk about auditing in this particular chapter. Then a dedicated chapter for the audit of the banks, right? Then a dedicated chapter for the audit of the banks. And then you have the chapter number 11, which is regarding the ethics and the terms of audit engagement, right? The ethics and the terms of of the engagement or the terms of the audit engagement. And so to begin with, at least we should be knowing that what are chapters. And so these are all chapters. These are all the chapters. I have marked them in the red color. Out of this, whatever chapters I have marked them in the red color. Right? What are those chapters regarding? Those are the audit chapters. Right? So audit of the items of the financial statement. So like how to do the audit of share capital, how to do the audit of reserves and surplus, how to do the audit of the borrowings, of the tangible fixed assets, intangible assets, and also what are the Schedule 3 disclosures. That's all discussed in this chapter of the items. And then audit of the different different types of the entities like you have government audit, cooperative society audit, NGO, charitable institution, local body, trusts and society, school, college, hospital, cinema hall, right? leasing company, higher purchase finance company. So all those different types of entities, what are the special aspects or features of the audit is discussed in chapter number nine. And then the audit of the banks, right, which is regarding the because mainly at your article ship, you happen to get to do the bank audit, right? So that is why bank audit chapter is there in CA final also, and it is there in CA intermediate also, right? So that is the chapter of the audit of the banks, right? So one part of my syllabus, right? So that is as per the study material and as per the sequence given in a book. But one part of my syllabus is regarding the audit, audit of the items of the financial statements, audit of the different types of the entities and the audit of the banks, right? And the audit of the banks. That is one part of our discussion, right? Then another part of our discussion is that each chapter, each concept we need to see what is the MCQ which can be asked. Right. So once see the question can be at the wholesale level that they can ask you the entire concept or in that concept, they can ask you one point in retail that one particular heading you explain it in detail or they can ask a micro level question at the MCQ point. You know, micro level question, okay, you know, the 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, 90 days. It's you have to know the correct number of days. So that requires like the micro reading of the subject. So whatever I study, I will always keep three dimensions in my mind. Okay, so total question kaise aa sakta hai? specific question kya sakta hai? and then MCQ micro level what questions can come. Right. And then another important part of my discussion in audit is going to be regarding the standards. Right. Which standards am I talking about over here? The standards on auditing. Right. The SAs and the SA, the standards on auditing. Right. When management is preparing the financial statements, who will prepare financial statements? Management. When management is preparing the financial statements, management will follow the accounting standards. An auditor, when you are doing the audit of these financial statements, you will follow the standards on auditing, right? So AS is accounting standards, but what is SA? It is not standards accounting. No, it is the standards on auditing. It is the standards on auditing. Who has issued AS as well as the SA? It has been issued by the ICAI, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Right, so auditor, he has to have knowledge of accounting standards also and standards on auditing also. Right? Because when I do audit, I have to check whether management has prepared the financial statements as per the accounting standards or whether there is any non-compliance of the accounting standards. And auditor, you also have to do your audit in accordance with the standards on auditing. Okay, now standards on auditing is a branch of the entire discussion of the standards. As such, relating to the standards, the ICAI has issued something called as the engagement and quality control standards. 
right? Engagement and quality control standards, like accounting standards, it is AS. But this SA, it has been issued under the main heading of the EQCS. What is EQCS? The Engagement and Quality Control Standards. And as a chartered accountant, as a CA in practice, what all types of engagement can you perform? It says as a CA in practice, practicing chartered accountant, CA having a certificate of practice, it says you can do an audit or you can do a review. Audit and review, both are post-mortem activities. Why? Because both are performed on the historical financial information. Or you can do any other assurance engagement other than audit or review. So that is called as other assurance. And so audit review also assurance, but it could be an assurance engagement other than audit or review. Like say for your prospective financial information, 31st March 2025. Right, then that is prospect 2035, right? So that is prospective, future financial information. Or it may be that CA, you're not doing any assurance work. You're not doing audit assurance work, review assurance work, or other assurance work. What CA is doing, CA in practice, he is providing the related services. What is CA providing? Related services. So as a chartered accountant, what are the types of engagement that you could be doing for your client, for your yes, audit team? You are the auditor, you are the CA in practice. You could be doing audit or you could be doing review or you could be doing the assurance engagement other than audit or review or you could be doing certain related services. Now, when you are doing the audit, it says auditor, you need to follow the standards on auditing. When you are doing the review, it says auditor, you need to follow the standards on review engagement. When you are doing the other assurance services, you need to follow the standards on assurance engagement. And when you are providing the related services, you need to follow the standards on related services. And so what we have over here is the standards on auditing, right? Then the standards on review engagement, then standards on assurance engagement, and then the standards on related services, right? The standards on related services. Right, so how many standards on auditing have been issued by ICAI 38? How many standards on review engagement? Two. How many standards on assurance engagement? Three. How many standards on related services? Two. Now, whether you are doing an audit or you are doing a review or you are doing an assurance engagement other than audit or review or you are providing certain related services to your client, it says you always have to maintain the quality of your services. There always has to be the quality. So for quality, we have one standard over there, which is SQC. Right? What does SQC stand for? It stands for the standard on quality control. It stands for the standard on quality control. And how many quality control standards have been issued by ICAI? One. And so if you see 38 plus 2, 40. 40 plus 3, 43. 43 plus 2, 45. And plus 1, 46. Right? So in total, 46 engagement and quality control standards have been released by the ICAI. Right? 46 engagement and quality control standards. Okay. Out of that, are these related services? Uh, what do you say? Review engagement applicable for your exams? No. Assurance engagement? No. Related services? No. Quality control? Yes. But introductory part to SRE, SAE, SRS is applicable. But as such, the standards on review engagement, that is your SRE 24002410, not applicable. SAE 34003402 and 3420, not applicable. And then SRS 44004410, not applicable. But SQC 1 standard 
on quality control one applicable for your exams. And out of the 38 standards on auditing at intermediate level, what is noticed is that 29 standards on auditing are applicable. Right? So as such for your CA inter audit, 30 standards are applicable. 30 standards out of that 29 are standards on auditing and one is the standard on the quality control. Right, one is the standard on the quality control. Right, so another important part which you need to know in the CA inter audit is the discussion regarding these standards on auditing. Right, it is the discussion regarding these standards on auditing. Right, these standards have been given under the different series 200, 300, 400 put together, 500, 600, and 700. 800, anyways, entire series is not applicable for your exams. Right? So, and then SQC1, which I told you is applicable for your exams, right? So, but in the standards, we have SA200, right? SA200. What is the title of SA200 and all of that? We will see. Right? Then 210, 220, 230. 240, 250, 260, 265, and 299. Right. So out of that 240, 250, not applicable at intermediate level. Right. Then 300, 315, 320, 330, 402, 450. So again, 402 not applicable at inter level. Right. Then 500, 501, 505, 510, 520. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. So again, 40 not applicable at the inter level. And then 600, 610, 620. Again, 620 not applicable. Right? Then 700, 701, 705, 706, 710, 720, 720 not applicable. And then you have the 800, 805 and 810, which is anyways the entire 800 series is not applicable at the inter level. Right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right, so I told you 29 auditing standards. How many are there? 38, but out of that only 29 are applicable. So here I've shown you the 9 which are not applicable at the inter level. And then nine standards which are not applicable at the inter level. And then in your chapter number 1 to 11, at different, different chapters, this particular standards ka discussion has been included. Right. So what have I told you so far? Okay, now your paper is divided under MCQ and theory. Then the 30 marks of MCQ and theory is of the 70 marks. Okay. Then this is the list of the 11 chapters that we need to study, right? Chapter number one, two, three, four, right? Six, seven, eight, right? And then after that, the 11, that is mainly the theory and the standards put together, right? And apart from that, you have these audit, audit of items of financial statement, audit of different types of entities and the bank audit, right? So these are the audits that you have. Earlier you used to have company audit also but now just little bit of section 143 and CARO 2020 is applicable. As such appointment of company auditor, removal of company auditor, those sections are not applicable in the new course. Right? So one is these audit of different different entities. Then I told you every question, every topic, every concept, we need to study it from three dimensions. Wholesale, retail, and MCQ. Okay, what micro level study has to be done. And then very important part of our discussion is regarding the standards. So though we say standards, now we know exactly what do we mean by standards. Okay, as such, what has been issued by ICAI are the engagement and quality control standards, which are 46. And out of that, 30 are applicable for your exam. And in that 30, 29 are the standards on auditing and one is the standard on the quality control. Right? So that is going to be our agenda for discussion for the next eight days of the class. Right? All the lack of confidence or all the lack of preparation or all the lack of motivation or lack of understanding towards the subject, all lack and all lacuna will be taken care of. And everything. It can't happen that you can't, you know, that you, you know, you don't like the subject of auditing after attending the class. 
you will develop your interest in the long run in future whether you start take audit as a career or not wo baad mein dekha jaye but abhi exam ke liye jo bhi required hai utna kaam ho jayega kya utna kaam to zarur ho jayega fir aage aake dekhte hai kya hoga hai na so that can be seen later but right now yeah exam oriented will our preparations be done 100% yes what is the requirement from your side what do you think this what is the requirement from your side yes you need to have faith you need to have dedication you need to be having the discipline of being regular in attending the class then after that you are you know you come and sit in the class obviously you are understanding and something will go in your head but if you don't switch on the computer only you don't switch on the laptop only it's a problem hai na fir kaise and then it won't be possible but yes if you pay attention and then just imagine students students have a question oh ma'am ye to fast track class hai isme sara cover ho jayega ho jayega have trust in me i will cover entirely right the entire discussion of the subject maybe we will not be able to do, do those many question and answers or do those many revisions as we do in a regular batch but the crux and not the entire essence of the subject will you get it in this particular class also yes you will certainly get the essence of the subject okay right so which book we will be using for the study of this as uh, yes, per subject of audit over here right so we will be using right the audit insights right so it's the group 2 right they copy it from group a ca final and then some particular error happens over there right so audit insights right so it's like a you know mini version of the regular book right so this is the regular book over here with me right which is like a 570 pages hai na phatta katta hai na khate peete ghar ka book ekdam hai na which is like exhaustively every possible question answer essay waste sara in detail vistar may has been discussed in this book and on the other hand if you see this book it is 298 pages so then ma'am what is the difference between the regular book and this book right so this book has the essence of the subject right so ye jo audit insights ki book hai it is got the essence it's not that we've deleted anything ha huh, maybe if there is repetition if there is extra explanation of a concept that has been deleted okay right so like if you see the nature objective and scope of audit right then the introduction the origin of audit has been given over there right then the meaning and nature of audit the definition of auditing right then interrelationship of auditing with the other subjects right then the objectives of the audit scope of audit what is included in the scope of audit and what it's not included in the scope of audit what are the inherent limitations of an audit then what is an engagement right then what are the advantages of an audit why audit is needed what are the different types of audit who appoints an auditor to whom does the auditor submit his report to right then what is the meaning of an assurance engagement what i just discussed with you audit review and the other assurance engagement right so what are the elements of an assurance engagement what is the meaning of review what is the difference between audit and the review right then types of assurance engagement right so it could be the reasonable assurance engagement which is your audit engagement or limited assurance engagement which is your review right so audit engagement or the review engagement right so examples of assurance engagement types of assurance engagement then eqcs what i already discussed with you and right. engagement and quality control standards standards on auditing standards on review engagement standards on assurance services standards on related services right then a paragraph for each one of them right so this is standards on the assurance engagement right this is the standards on the assurance engagement and then related services then why standards are needed or so then just a few correct and correct now do correct and correct are not seen in the question paper but still you know from this they make the mcqs from this they could ask you the theoretical part of the questions in the exam which will help you to build up your concepts right so that is why just a few correct and correct have been kept over there the tricky ones right and then after that you see the theoretical questions and the test your understanding right then after that the audit strategy planning and program so matlab ma'am 570 pages and this is 298 like let's take it as 300 pages is this 300 pages book enough for me to study for the exam that's the question you have 
कि मैम ये 300 पेज का बुक बस हो जाएगा क्या ऑडिट के पढ़ने के लिए आई एम टेलिंग यू बस नहीं बस से भी ज्यादा हो जाएगा ट्रेन हो जाएगा है ना इज इट इनफ नो इट इज नॉट ओनली इनफ इट इज मोर देन इनफ राइट फॉर यू टू कवर द एंटायर सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द ऑडिट मोर देन इनफ then ma'am how then how i study and everything at three times you need to study from this book before the exam minimum three times right from whichever book regular book or this book you study three times from it without going into the mo maya ke acha iska question aaya tha acha iska question nahi hai acha ye question mtp mein hai ye rtp mein hai ye suggested mein hai na november 2022 mein aaya tha ye may 23 mein aaya tha ye sari mo maya mein nahi gayi hai jab aaya tha आया था जब आएगा आगे चल के आएगा अभी अगर आप जब एग्जाम लिख रहे हो राइट नाउ व्हेन यू आर राइटिंग द एग्जाम एंड इफ द क्वेश्चन कम्स इन द एग्जाम यू शुड बी एबल टू एड्रेस यू शुड बी एबल टू राइट डाउन द आंसर right so trust me it's over a period of time that we prepare a regular book then prepare the summary book of that we can call it summary book we can call it insights we call it express at ca final doesn't matter and the name doesn't matter but the content of the book yes certainly that is something very very important okay right so then all the questions like if i happen to show you the regular book also you will agree with me that yes ma'am whatever contents were there in the main book even those contents are included in this particular book over here right so if i let me see where do i have the Right, so five seventy five because it just gets some a preface and index and all that gets added. Now see over here nature, objective and scope of audit, origin of auditing, meaning and nature of audit. So maybe the examples have been deleted. Interrelationship of auditing with other disciplines. Same content is included. Then what is included in the scope of audit? What is excluded from the scope of audit? Inherent limitations of an audit. right what are the inherent limitations then what is an engagement what are the benefits of an audit types is audit mandatory or voluntary who appoints to whom does the auditor report to meaning of an assurance engagement elements of assurance engagement types of assurance engagement right then examples then qualities of an auditor eqcs right sa sre sa e sr s sqc then why standards are needed then duties in relation to the eqcs now here if you see in the correct and correct how many questions do you see over here in the correct and correct oh my god oh my god 20 whereas when you saw it in the audit insights book there it was only 3 right so whatever is as a direct question straight forward those i have not put it in the insight book and is something which is tricky different hatke only those type of questions have been included then if you see in the insights book right if we happen to look at the question bank right the theoretical questions over there we have just three theoretical questions given over there whereas if we happen to see it in the regular book right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 right oh my god god right right so it's so 21 questions have been included over there right so why only 3 and why 21 over here because here in the regular book i have given you know a question which is directly there in the chapter and i've just given a reference to the contents of the chapter and i've just given a reference to the contents of the chapter okay benefits of audit why audit is needed then the in here limitations of an audit whatever question hai right na so obviously all this ab maine yahan pe kya kiya hai regular book mein inherent limitations of audit ka kaise question aaya hai aur wo aapko chapter mein where you have to read it i have given it over you but in the insights book what did i tell you tell you no mo maya no going into the illusion when what came what did not came if it is there in the book there in study material that's it Right, so only the offbeat questions have been included, and then are the test your understanding questions included over there? Right, so you have some test your understanding, right? So some six questions given over there, right? So you are also whichever is not a yes, direct question, all of those have been included, right? So you see, all the six questions have been included for the test your understanding, right? So clear, everybody, are we good?
Yes, you say, ma'am, if it is like 300 pages, maybe instead of three times, ma'am, we can read the content of the book four times also. So nothing like it. But very important, just say, aap audit padte ho na, to kuch kuch baate. So is this audit insights book enough? It's not only enough, it is more than enough for you to study. Then after that, you study it minimum three times before the exam. And then very important two rules for success. You know, it's like the success mantra for the audit paper. One is like one, two, three, four. How many times should I go through the concept? Cumulative revision. So you study it three times. That is, you know, in detail, you study it three times. But, you know, you have to stay in touch. And you have to keep on looking at the ICAI, the technical language over there. You write in your own language, kuch nahi milega. And a zero, zero, the hen will keep laying the eggs in your exam hall in that case. Right, in your exam paper in that case, nothing you will catch. Right, so you have to have the technical terms. You would have to develop the familiarity towards the technical terms. So that is why cumulative revision. That is one important mantra for success in the audit paper. And second important mantra for success in the audit paper is doing the writing practice. Kya iske baare mein to kitna kahu utna kam hai. And it's like how much ever I you know, convey to you the importance of writing practice that is going to fall short. That important for you. See, I am telling you, it's okay. It's not fine, but it's okay. If out of 300 pages, you could study 220 pages only. Or, you know, out of 11 chapters, you could study only 8 chapters or something like that. It's okay. The world is not going to fall on you. But after studying these 220 pages or after studying these 8 chapters, after knowing the content of that chapter, if you don't know how to write, hopeless. अगर लिखना नहीं आता है तो प्रॉब्लम है अपने आप को बुद्धू बनाना छोड़ दो डोंट ट्राई टू डू थिंग्स व्हिच आर कन्वीनिएंट कंफर्टेबल फॉर यू स्टॉप अवॉइडिंग द अनकंफर्टेबल और द थिंग्स व्हिच यू डोंट लाइक यू से मैम यू टेल मी टू रीड मैम आई विल रीड 20 मोर पेजेस बट डोंट टेल मी टू राइट इट्स ओके आई विल से ओके डोंट राइट बट विल इंस्टीट्यूट अग्री विद दैट नो ना सो इट्स ओके Instead of four questions, if I've studied three questions, okay. But these three questions, am I able to write? That is the important requirement. I always give an example. Ke jaise mujhe kuch agar food item banana hai. So one, I require the ingredients and then I also need the recipe. And then only after that, the dish will be ready. You understand? I have the best of ingredients. I have the best of the quality of the quality. But the recipe is not coming. Like a sizzler or sushi. Banana hai. I don't know the recipe. I get all the ingredients. No. Will the dish come out well? No. Only ingredients, no recipe? Bad. Right? You say, I know the recipe, but my ingredients are not good. I don't know the content, but I can write very well, but technical in my own language. Again, will the dish turn out to be good? No. For a dish to turn out to be good, there has to be good ingredients, there has to be the proper recipe, then the dish will come out well. And obviously, they always say, you know, in cooking, the secret ingredient is always love. And so you're also the secret ingredient which you'll put in your paper is your dedication towards the study of the subject. And it is going to be your dedication towards the study of the subject. Okay, right? So that is why. Matlab, ye ingredient matlab kya hai? Jo aap content pad rahe ho. Phir aap wo content kaise prastut kar rahe ho? Kya procedure hai? That's your recipe. And that will lead to the correct dish. And you know what we want in the dish? Minimum 50 marks. Ma'am, what if 70 come? Wonderful. What if 90 comes? Wonderful. Number 23, one of my students got 93 marks in audit. Can you believe it? Even I'm not able to believe. 93 marks. I will show you his notes and his question as answer paper also. Like, you know, 70, 80 is like digestible, no? no but 93 Oh my God, you can also see the, you know, interview which I've taken of that particular student on my YouTube channel, if time permits or if you would like to see it. Okay, right. So you say, ma'am, you are saying only 50, but ma'am, I thought was thinking of getting 80 marks in order. No problem, beta. So that's like a raja. 
Get 110, get 100, get 80, get 70, get whatever possible. What you have to get minimum in CA, inter, CA, final is 50, 50, 50, 150, 50, 50, 50, 150. And then after that, the 300 out of 600. You know, CA inter, now CA final also you have the same uh, three, three subjects matter over there also. So 300 out of 600. Ma'am, what if I get 500 out of 600? Very good. It is so good. Bringing joy and happiness to the world. If you get 500 out of 600, ma'am, what if in CA final I get all India rank 1, 2, 3? Get it now. Who is stopping you? The problem is if you get some 39 and you get some 58 and 58. Then no, no, as a failure here. If you get like 23, 17 and 18, this is like a good failure. Normal people failing. This is like you deserve to fail. But ye to na jina hai na marna hai. Okay, you got 58. Now you don't know whether that 58 will ever come again. Here you got 39 just for one mark. Just for one mark. Then because individually in one subject you did not get the 40 marks. This is the challenge of the CA course. Now, you know, those students who come to CA course, hai, when they come at CA intermediate level, maybe, I'm just giving it as a caption, maybe, it's the first time that they come across failure in life. Before that, they have never, failure has never touched them in life. Because 30, 30, 35, 50 percent do you normally get, no. You know, so nothing goes wrong. Then CA inter, CA final. Oh, but you know, once you get this 300, 300 marks in your life, next 40 years, your life is set. And the next 40 years, your life is going to be amazing. And it's all going to be great. And the rest of the life. Okay. Right. So anyways, this is what I wanted to tell you regarding the contents of our syllabus, regarding the book which I will be using for discussion in the class. And then that is how we proceed with our discussion. Koi koi students ko, few students, they have some sort of a setback, you know. Ke, oh, yaar, this Aarti ma'am teaches in English. Na, humko to Hindi mein padna hai. Pane, pa, padha lu Hindi mein. Hai na? Aisa, kyunki kya hota hai na? Ke jo... Uh, Hindi ke students hai, wo to English mein bhi sun sakte hai. But jo English ke students hai, unhe to hum Hindi mein nahi padha sakte hai. Hai na, to unko lagta hai, nahi ma'am, Hindi mein padna hai. Aray, Hindi mein padh ke kari kya loge? Kyunki exam to English mein likhna hai. Or meri jo English hai, the English which I speak in the class is absolutely audit English. It is not a Shashi Tharoor or a Shakespeare or any type of a complicated, you know, English which I use. Normal English. Or SAB English Anna is a very important part of your personality. No, you can't have it, can't happen. You see, a bande fit se abhi fir bhi abhi tak ek line bhi English mein tik se bol nahi pate ho. Zaruri hai na? Right? So don't keep it as a mind block in you, you know, as a mind block. Okay, oh, you know, no, she's teaching in English. No, she's teaching audit in English because I have opted for English medium. And that is why normal English or itna English sun sun ke, you know, you will develop your comfort over the listening of the subject. And then in Hindi, mein audit ko kaise bolte hai? Ankeksan. You know, audit, what is it called in Hindi? It is called as Ankeksan. And then I will teach you Ankeksan. It will be like that. Okay, right. So, anyways, you know, so that being a reason, because, you know, some students, they probably don't follow Hindi. That's the reason I speak in English. And then, see, my English is not having any particular accent also, any vernacular accent. Bhi nahi hai. It's a normal English. Right? So, in case, if you have it in your mind that you want to do this class, but you think, no, no, ma'am, you English in English, so no problem will not come. This is my guarantee. Because what I will be speaking in the content of the class. Okay? So what do you do? Dedicatedly, every day you have to attend the class. Keep making notes as and when I teach in the class. Obviously, the encrypted PDF of the notes which I make in the class will also be uploaded on the Rio Play app on which you are watching these lectures. And so even on that, this particular notes will be updated, the uh, uploaded the encrypted PDF. But that does not mean that you don't do any writing when I teach in the class. 
सबसे बढ़िया नोट्स आपके लिए कौन से हैं जो आपने खुद ने बनाए हैं है ना द नोट्स विच यू प्रिपेयर आर द बेस्ट वन फॉर यू टू स्टडी फ्रॉम सो यू मेक सम नोट्स एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू डू सम मार्किंग as in when i'm teaching a particular concept topic chapter in the class you use some highlighters right you use some highlighters you use some particular pens and you do the highlighting marking in the class also right so keep writing you know don't be under the false impression oh yeah yeah i'm listening to her i'll remember everything that she talks about no you please do the marking and you know, if i make you mark a question as important like five star you mark it over there as five star right or i tell you that it's an important question so you mark it as an important question okay right so all good everyone right all good right all good yes all ready to enter into the world of auditing and then start your article ship also now only two years of article ship for you guys right and you will be doing wonderful audits during your article ship okay right so what we will do more or less our batch we will divide it under the two parts like we have eight days of the class right so four days and the four days right so what we'll do four days we will keep it for these audit of the items of the financial statements the audit of the different types of the entities and also the bank audit and then apart from that for another four days right we'll do the all the other standard related discussion but very important for us to take off in the subject of auditing is that we need to have a good base you know we need to have a good foundation why right? because the a foundation no audit over there and accounts law all that and it is there at economics that's all there at the foundation level but inter level is the first time when you are introduced to the subject of auditing right so that is why today we will focus on the building up of the concepts and we will focus on sa 200 but right. then after that the sa 210 which is regarding your engagement letter and then the 700 series and before that we will do some introductory discussion right so that is going to be our agenda for discussion today right everyone if i don't answer your questions on the chat box probably i am in the middle of a discussion of a concept and probably your answer will get solved in the remaining part of my discussion and if it doesn't happen then again you can send your question again and i would certainly be happy to answer your question yes everyone all good shuru kare right let's begin with our discussion of the subject okay that's great okay right so now what we will do anyways as i have told you regarding these eqcs right the engagement and quality control standards right i told you regarding the eqcs right the engagement and the quality control standards right which i told you are of the engagement are of four types standards on auditing standards on review engagement standards on assurance engagement and the standards on the related services right so as a ca you could be doing audit review other assurance or the right other assurance or the related services engagement and whatever be the type of engagement that you are performing you always have to maintain the quality right so that is the standard on the quality control okay right so now they say this audit review and other assurance what are these these are the assurance engagement right what are these these are the assurance engagement and this is the related services related services means it is a non assurance engagement you are not giving any assurance you are just providing some related services so that is the non assurance engagement the related services so now let's talk about the assurance engagement right to give an assurance okay so now you're saying someone you know say somebody has got some particular fracture or something and then they saying oh i don't know how whether this will be okay again any time or will it always remain like this so what will happen now so then what you do you give them an assurance 
डोंट वरी एवरीथिंग विल बी फाइन ठीक हो जाएगा सब कुछ सब बराबर हो जाएगा टेंशन मत लो ठीक हो जाएगा है ना टाइम गिव इट सम टाइम है ना सो व्हेन यू गिविंग एन अश्योरेंस लाइक यू नो यू गो टू द शॉप एंड यू से भैया ये ठीक तो निकलेगा ना विल दिस प्रोडक्ट भी ओके सो दे हां हां मेरी गारंटी है नहीं निकला तो फिर से लाके दे देना and if it doesn't turn out to be good you come and return it back to us right so what is that they are giving some sort of an assurance so if somebody gives you an assurance that means what are they doing <coughs> i'm telling you don't worry you know you'll be able to use the ma'am i'm very scared of audit ma'am ma'am theory subject ma'am tax on no accounts everything okay ma'am audit theory subject ma'am i don't understand i'll say you don't worry beta you'll be fine you'll get good marks don't worry start studying so obviously i'm giving you an assurance that means what i am giving you a degree of confidence you know you're giving a degree of confidence to the intended users you know degree of confidence to the intended users like what do we say financial statements and you know? fs is what financial statements mainly who has prepared the financial statements of the company the management right they are the runners of the company board of directors they are actually running the day to day operations of the company and who are the owners of the company the shareholders and you know, they are the true owners of the company but are they taking part in the day to day decision making of the management no so share and management say see shareholders we've prepared these financial statements now will these financial statements you know can the shareholders have assurance regarding these financial statements no you know because they say oh you only prepared it so what shareholders do they appoint an auditor and they tell auditor auditor you do the audit of these financial statements and issue us an auditor's report on the financial statements and when auditor has given a report ke yeah yeah these financial statements what do you mean by financial statements balance sheet statement of profit and loss cash flow statement statement of changes in equity if applicable and the notes and a summary of significant accounting policies and the other explanatory information if auditor is giving an audit report saying that these financial statements give a true and fair view and of the state of affairs state of affairs is shown in the balance sheet results is shown in the profit and loss cash flows is shown in the cash flow statement changes in equity shown in the soce you know so then it increases the confidence of the intended users on these financial statements it increases the confidence of the intended users on these financial statements that is why it is said that audit is an assurance engagement now as an auditor can i give a 100% assurance that these financial statements are true and correct everything is right there cannot be anything wrong no we cannot give the 100% confidence we cannot give the 100% assurance right so like that all that all how much germs does it kill you see that all add how much germs does it kill that all 99.99 but do they say 100% of the germs will be killed never you brush your teeth with sensodyne or close up or colgate again what does it say 99.99 will it say 100% never right so that is why audit is an assurance engagement but what type of or level of assurance is given by the auditor reasonable assurance why reasonable why not absolute assurance when it says auditor gives the reasonable assurance but not the 100% assurance not the absolute assurance why not the absolute assurance due to the inherent limitations of an audit then you know, inherent inherent means it is there by default like you know i always tell my students like i tell you you okay, see there is an elephant coming from there so now if i tell you see there is an elephant coming from there do i need to separately tell you that see the tail of the elephant is also coming along with the elephant you say ma'am it's as you know if the elephant is coming it will come with its trunk also it will come with its legs also it will come with its ears also it will come with its tail also no need for you to tell it separately 
So that is what, whenever an audit is done, will these inherent limitations always be there? Yes, they will always be there. Right, so is audit an assurance engagement? Yes, but is it a 100% assurance engagement? No, it is not an absolute assurance engagement. Then what type of an assurance engagement it is? Reasonable assurance. And what is reasonable assurance? Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but not an absolute assurance. And a reasonable assurance is a high level. 99, 95, 93, 94, 85. It's the judgment of the auditor, professional judgment of the auditor, but it is not the absolute assurance. Right. So when we talk about audit, right, what are standards are to be followed while doing an audit? Standards on auditing. What level of assurance is given by the auditor? Reasonable assurance and a reasonable assurance. Okay. Right. Whereas on the other hand, if I talk about a review, can okay, now instead of the audit of the financial statements, the review of the financial statements is being done. So now what needs to be followed is the standards on the review engagement. And now what level of assurance is given by the auditor? Limited assurance is given by the auditor. 50-50. And a reasonable assurance is a high level of the assurance. And a reasonable assurance is the high level of the assurance. Whereas limited assurance is like a moderate level. 50-50. And it's like a moderate level of the assurance, right? Audit, how many standards we have? 38. Review, how many standards we have? Two standards on review engagement. And audit, 38 standards on auditing. So obviously, audit is going to be more in scope as compared to a review. And review is going to be less in scope as compared to an audit. And audit is more in scope as compared to a review, whereas review is going to be less in scope as compared to an audit. Right. So now, say company has prepared their financial statements for 31st March 2030. Example, say we are in the year 2031. So company has prepared their financial statements for 31st March 2030. And they are telling CA, please do check-in. What CA says, I can do two types of checking of your financial statements. Either I can do audit or I can do review. If I do audit, I will be giving you a reasonable assurance. If you want a review, then I will be able to give you only the limited assurance. To do audit, say example, CA says I will take 25 days. To do review, CA says I will finish it in 10 days. Audit fee, CA says 2 crore. Review fee, say CA says 30 lakh. Then client, you decide okay, whether you want an audit done or a review done. If law requires you to get an audit done, then get audit done. If you want to declare your review results, then you get a review. Right? Then you get the review done. Right? So that is first what is an assurance engagement. And then after that, audit is also an assurance engagement. Review is also an assurance engagement. But there is a difference in the level of the assurance being given by the auditor. Right? There is a difference in the level of the assurance being given by the auditor. Okay, right. So now let us study this particular assurance engagement and so. Okay, right. So one, it talks about what is an engagement. Right, engagement means an arrangement to do something. It means a formal agreement between auditor and client. And this is agreed in the form of an engagement letter. And then external engagement is to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users. Like I told you, audit is that it is a, what you say, an assurance engagement. And such engagements are also known as the reasonable assurance engagement, right? Why? Because the auditor is doing the audit. Right? And even non-corporate entities may get their accounts audited. Okay. Right. Then Right. Then after that, meaning of an assurance engagement. Right. So assurance engagement. What did I say to give an assurance to someone is to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users other than the responsible party. Who is the responsible party over here? The management. Because who is going to prepare the financial statements? The management. Right. About the outcome of the evaluation of subject matter against the criteria that we will study it in the elements of assurance engagement. We'll come to that. 
effect. But what is the important line? It enhances the degree of confidence of the intended users for people other than the responsible party. Like I told you for the shareholders, it enhances the degree of confidence. Right? And then we have the audit and review. What did I say? Audit is a reasonable assurance engagement, whereas review is a, right? Audit is a reasonable assurance engagement, whereas a review is a limited assurance engagement. Review provides less assurance than an audit. Review involves fewer procedures and gathers sufficient appropriate evidence to reach the limited conclusion. But what is common? K audit and review both are performed on the historical financial information. And both are post-mortem activity. That's what I had written over here also. K audit and review both are performed on the historical historical financial information. You know, that is common about it. Okay, both are done for historical. And then you have the types of engagement. What are the types of engagement? One, it is the reasonable assurance engagement like audit, where the auditor provides reasonable assurance, which is a high level of assurance and limited assurance engagement like review, which provides lower level of assurance, a limited level of assurance. And it is only a moderate level of the assurance. Right? So one question of distinguish over there, reasonable assurance engagement versus the limited assurance engagement. Reasonable assurance is high level. Limited assurance is low level of the assurance than a reasonable assurance engagement. In a reasonable assurance, obviously we do more procedures, extensive procedure, whereas in a limited assurance engagement, we perform the fewer procedures. In a reasonable assurance engagement, we draw the reasonable conclusion. Here you draw only the limited conclusion. And this is audit engagement. This is review engagement. Right? So that is one important question which we could see in your exams. A distinguish between three mark question, reasonable assurance engagement versus the limited assurance engagement. Right? So what you have to remember, reasonable assurance is high level. So for high level, you will have to do more extensive procedure. Obviously, it's reasonable assurance. You will reach reasonable conclusion. And what is the example? Audit engagement. Right. Then apart from audit or review, there could be the other assurance engagement also. Pay attention, everyone. Sit straight. Apart from audit review, there could be the other assurance engagement also. So it talks about assurance engagement other than historical financial information. That means now we are talking about the SAE. And then this was the SA, Standards on Auditing. This was the SRE, Standards on Review Engagement. Now we are talking about the SAE. Besides reasonable assurance and limited assurance engagement, there is another kind of assurance which is related to matters other than historical financial information. And what could be the matter other than historical financial information? It could be prospective financial information, like say 31st March 2040, or giving an assurance regarding the controls in an organization. Right? So that is not related to historical financial information. What is the thumb rule? Other than historical financial information, if you are doing any assurance engagement, then that is the other assurance engagement. And other than historical financial information. For historical financial information, you can do the... For historical financial information, you can do the audit or the review. Right? And other than, other than historical financial information, then it becomes the other assurance engagement, right? Then it becomes the other assurance engagement. Like they've given the example of the prospective financial information, PFI, and the future, 31st March 2040, or it is regarding the internal controls, giving assurance regarding the internal controls at an entity. So that is again the other than historical financial information. Right, then you have these two points over there, historical financial information and the prospective financial information. Historical financial information, it talks about the economic events, conditions, circumstances occurring in the 
past periods, right? So it's related to the past and a post-mortem activity. Then it is the historical financial information. And if it is based on assumption about occurrence of future events and possible actions by an entity, then it is your prospective financial information. Okay, next year our sales will increase by 40%. Next year the company will have 100 new employees, right? So that is based on assumptions about the occurrence of future events and possible actions. Right? So occurrence of future events and the possible action. It can be in the form of a forecast or in the form of a projection. Right? So generally, if it is only based on the best estimate assumption, right? so prospective financial information is based on the assumptions about the future events and action. About the future events and action. Actions And then what does it say? This prospective financial information could be a forecast, like you have the weather forecast that tomorrow it will rain, right? Or it could be a projection that next 10 years, how the global warming scenario would be, right? So that's generally forecast is short term, whereas projection is long term. And a forecast, like next one year, what will be the revenue of the company? That is forecast. But five years down the line, how the company performance will look like? That is a projection. Many companies can also go for a combination, one year forecast plus a five year projection. Can they only prepare forecast? Yes. Can they only prepare projection? Yes. Can they go for combination of both? Yes. And so it says it is historical financial information is based on the past events and a past period, past events, whereas prospective financial information is based on the future events, right? Whereas the prospective financial information is based on the future events. And in assurance report involving the prospective financial information, right? So which is regarding your future. And the practitioner has to obtain this practitioner who is practitioner CA having a certificate of practice. And the CA in practice, chartered accountant in practice, this practitioner has to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. Now, normally you would have heard a term called as the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. And normally you would have heard a term called as the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. But only for when it is audit, we say SAAE. In all other cases, we only say when it is audit, we say SAAE. Whereas all other cases, we only say the SAE. Sufficient appropriate evidence. Only where it is audit, there we say the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Otherwise, we only say sufficient appropriate evidence. To the effect that management assumptions on which the perspective is prepared are not unreasonable. And prospective information is properly prepared on the basis of assumption. So what assumption I made? Can next year our sales will increase by 40%. Right, so this is my assumption. So one, what you need to check that this assumption is not unreasonable. That you say, no, no, this is very unreasonable. How you're saying 40% sales will increase only by 15%. So in that case, this 40% is unreasonable. So one, for prospective CA practitioner, what you need to check that the presumptions are not unreasonable. That means they should be reasonable. And second, the prospective financial information should be properly prepared based on the assumption. It should be properly prepared based on the assumption. That is, what is my assumption? Can next year the sales will increase by 40%. So this year, if the sales is 10 crore, then as per my assumption, next year the sales should be 14 crore. And the next year, the sales should be 14 crore. But what I said, no, this year sales is 10 crore. Next year, it will be 20 crore. So now, have I properly prepared the prospectus based on the assumption? No. My assumption was 40%. I have the assumption that 100% sales will increase. So is it properly prepared based on the assumption? No. So for assumptions, you have to check two things. One, they should not be unreasonable. And second, the perspective should be properly prepared based on the assumption. Right? And all the assumptions which have been made by the management in preparing the prospective financial information, what is point three? If those assumptions should be adequately disclosed. Just say financial statements may. And like in the 
financial statements in the notes to account the accounting policies are disclosed likewise now in the prospective financial information in the notes what does it say the assumptions okay next year sales will increase by 40 percent this assumption has been made this assumption should be disclosed Right. So what does it say? See it when you are appointed to give a report on the prospective financial information. What three points you will check? One, that the assumptions are not unreasonable. Second, that prospective is properly prepared based on the assumption. And third, all the assumptions have they been adequately disclosed. And third, have all the assumptions been adequately disclosed. And evidence to support the assumptions is available. Such evidence is future oriented. So can you express an opinion as to whether the results will be achieved? No. Can you give 100% guarantee? Okay, yeah, yeah, don't worry. The next year, the sales will increase to 14 crore. No. You cannot give an assurance. Why? Because it is future oriented. And therefore, in such assure engagement, practitioner provides a report assuring that nothing has come to the practitioner's attention that suggests that these assumptions do not provide a reasonable basis. Hence, such type of an assurance engagement provide only the moderate level of the assurance. So what level of assurance is given? 50-50. And a 50-50 means moderate assurance. And you know, moderate assurance is always given in the form of a negative assurance. Hello? Negative assurance. Like see, in an audit, in an audit, yes, I give a reasonable assurance. Right? Reasonable assurance. What I say? That financial statements give a true and fair view. Right? So this is a positive assurance. This is a positive statement. Okay? Financial statements give a true and fair view. Whereas in a review or in the other assurance engagement, right? Now what is the CA doing? He is giving the practitioner. What is he doing? He is giving the limited assurance. He is giving only the moderate assurance. He is only giving the moderate level of the assurance. And how does he say that in case of review? Nothing has come to our attention. That causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view. And nothing has come to our attention. That causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view. So minus minus plus. Nothing has come to our attention that they do not give a true and fair view. That means they are true and fair. But that is what okay, negative assurance, limited assurance, moderate assurance has to be given as a negative assurance. Whereas reasonable assurance can be given like a positive assurance. So you'll say, ma'am, you're also you're saying true and fair. You're also true and fair. But here I'm saying true and fair in a positive way. Whereas here I'm saying true and fair in a negative way. Okay, nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view. Like in case of the perspective, what do we say? Nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that the assumptions are not reasonable. Right? Nothing has come to our attention that the assumptions are not reasonable. That means what? The assumptions are reasonable. But that is the stuff. No, what do we say? Nothing has come to the practitioner's attention to suggest that these assumptions do not provide a reasonable basis. Minus, minus, plus. Why? Because moderate assurance is to be given in the form of a negative assurance. Reasonable assurance is to be given in the form of a positive assurance. You understand everyone? This is what you have to understand. I can't make it a cakewalk for you, you know, to by giving you some simple, simple terms. No. Ye jo exam mein aayega, ye jo institute ke study material mein hai, ye iske baare mein hume understanding develop karna hai. And then that is the purpose of the class. Right? So now if they ask you a question regarding the prospective financial information, right, can you write down a paragraph for the same? Right? Prospective financial information. And then it talks about the examples of assurance engagement. So audit, reasonable assurance. Review, limited assurance. Prospective financial information, reasonability of the assumption. And report on controls at service organization is giving a report regarding the design and operation of the control. For prospective financial information, we have 3400. For report on controls at a service organization, we have 3402. 
and for audit we have the standards on auditing and for review we have the standards on the review engagement right so these are the examples of the assurance engagement okay right then engagement and quality control standards what does it say what are the engagement standards issued by icai standards on auditing standards on review standards on assurance and the standards on related services right so standards on auditing which apply in the audit of historical financial information review which again applies in the review of the historical financial information right then standards on assurance engagement other than audit and review of historical financial information and standards on related services that means it is now no assurance right it is a related services it is not any assurance engagement and right? no assurance right it's like agreed upon procedures aup and right? agreed upon procedures compilation engagement okay? generally management prepares financial statements but here they are telling cca you prepare you prepare the financial statements you compile the financial statements then that is the uh, uh, what you say related services right so agreed upon procedures compilation engagement and other related services engagement right and then they've given the separate paragraphs for standards on auditing standards on review engagement right this would have been the standards on assurance engagement right then the standards on related services and then the sqc and then why standards are needed and duties in relation to eqcs Right, so now let us study these seven headings over here. Okay, first one, standards on auditing, right? Apply in the context of audit of financial statements by an independent auditor, audit of historical financial information, right? Obviously, standard means there is a uniformity, you know, it's a standard. That means, you know, every, like there are thousand chartered accountants, CA firms, they all don't do the audit as they wish. Right? They have the auditing standards to be followed. So when there is a standard, that means there is a benchmark. And then there is a particular uniformity, standardization. Right? So these standards establish the high quality benchmarks which are to be followed by the auditor. Standards have been issued on a wide spectrum of issues like SA 200, overall objectives of the auditor, right? then planning and audit, audit documentation, identifying, assessing RMM, audit sampling, audit evidence, forming an opinion and reporting. And then they've given some examples of the standards on auditing over here. Right? So it's for the audit, audit of historical financial information, and it is the high quality benchmark and it's on a wide spectrum of issues. Right. Then standards on review engagement, right? Review when the review of financial statements is to be done. It's a limited assurance engagement and obviously it gives an assurance which is less than an audit and less assurance in a review as compared to an audit. Obviously review involves the fewer procedures and since review also provides the assurance to the users, it also involves obtaining the sufficient appropriate evidence not sufficient appropriate audit evidence or don't say sufficient appropriate review evidence no if it is audit then you call it saae in all other cases you call it saae and a sufficient appropriate evidence and it says when auditor is performing the review of interim financial information what is interim financial information june september december and interim then the first quarter, April, May, June. Then second quarter, July, August, September. And third quarter, October, November, December. Right? So that's interim financial information. And we have two standards for the review engagement. Right? Then assurance engagement. What does it say? Other than historical financial information. Obviously, it does not include audit or review. Right? These standards are the SAE, the standards on assurance engagement. Example, it could be for the prospective financial information or the design and operation of internal control. Right? And they've given examples of two SAE over here, 3400, prospective financial information, and 3420, which is for the pro forma financial information. Right? So PFI and PFFI. Right, so PFI and this is PFFI, pro forma financial information. And then they talk about the standards on 
related services like when client has asked you to perform the IUP what is IUP agreed upon procedures or where client has told you to compile the financial information to assist management with the preparation presentation of financial statements that is compilation engagement and also IUP or the compilation engagement now what does it say no opinion and then neither an audit nor a review no limited limited assurance no reasonable assurance zero and then no assurance <coughs> no assurance is being given that is why they are called as the related services and again you have the 4400 which is for IUP right the agreed upon procedures and then you have the 4410 which is for the compilation engagement Right? And it is clearly understood that all the above standards put together are called as the engagement standards. And obviously, whose responsibility to comply with these standards, auditor or the practitioner. Okay, right, then SQC. You know, SQC is the quality control standard. Right? So the entire firm has the responsibility to maintain the system of the quality control. Right? And also to ensure that they don't do the work as they wish, but they do the work as per the PSLR. What is PSLR? Professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement. And they don't issue just any report. Whatever reports are issued, are they appropriate in these circumstances? So rather, these one sentence written over here is nothing but the objectives of SQC1. Okay, why ICAI has issued a quality control standard? You know, like, you know, we have different CA firms. Example, it's an you know, SQC1 is applicable to all CA firms. So whether you're a sole proprietor, partnership firm, LLP, firm with 20 partners, two partners, five partners, all CA firms, all CAs, it is applicable. But like, say, you know, PWC, EY, you know, KPMG, Deloitte, to all of them also, is it applicable? Yes, you know, all CA firms. And ABC and company, DF and company, P and company, all CA firm. Why standard on quality control? Kya milega? Kyu itna firms ko pakar ke rakha hai? Ke nahi nahi, you should do your work as per quality. One, it says so that the work is done as per the PSLR. Professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement. And you don't do the work as you wish. And what is the ultimate deliverable of your firm? The reports that you issue. So whether the reports issued, are they uchit? Are they appropriate in these circumstances? Right? Whether the reports issued, are they appropriate in these circumstances? Right? So one, what does it say? Whether the work has been done as per the PSLR. And the professional standards, like whatever different standards have been issued by ICAI and the laws and regulations. And the reports issued, are they appropriate in these circumstances, right? So that is standard on quality control. And obviously, whether you are doing audit, review, other assurance or related services, do you always need to maintain the quality? Yes. So SQC is applied for all services covered by the engagement standards. It is applicable for whatever be the type of engagement that you are performing. Right. So everyone, please take a deep breath and continue to listening to me. Right. So we talked about the assay, SA, SARI, and the standards on review engagement, SAI, the standards on the assurance engagement, SRIS, standards on related services, and then SCRISI, the standards on the quality control. Now we come to the next question. Why are standards needed and the duties in relation to the EQCS? Right. So this question we mark it as a final. Five star. Five star important is what I think. Ma'am, will the question come in exam that you come to know before me? And then that to you go in exam hall, you spend the three hours, and somebody puts the paper, question paper on the internet, and then we get to see it. So, ma'am, will it come? Ma'am, you said it will come, ma'am. Nay, I am, ma'am. Aisa kaise, ma'am. I have no answers for all of that. I am making a plain, simple statement over there. Okay, according to me, this question is a five star. Right? That this is an important question. Okay, okay why standard? And okay, you, and I just say, you know, there is an auditing standard, SE 700. And I'm forming an opinion and reporting on financial statements. And I'm forming an opinion and reporting on financial statements it talks about the contents of the audit report 
and it talks about what are the points to be considered while forming an opinion and then the contents of the report. So any auditor doing audit has to follow these contents of the report. And you cannot say, no, no, my report is different. I don't follow this. No, no, we have our own style of reporting. No, no, we have our own format of reporting. No, this is not a wedding card. Okay? You can have your own format. This is an audit report. Right? So it has to be standardized. So that is why, again, what does it say? It lays down the benchmark at par with the global practices. So like, you know, if you have a SA 700, correspondingly, there is also an ISA 700, International Standard on Auditing 700. SAR 700 has been issued by AASB, the Auditing and Assurance Standard Board of the ICAI. ISA has been issued by the International Auditing and Assurance Standard Board of the International Federation of Accountants. And so it is to bring about the benchmark at par with the global practices. Then also to improve the quality of the financial reporting, thereby helping users to make the diligent decision. Right? So one, it is the benchmark. If we are at par with the global practices, then to improve the quality of the financial reporting so that the users can make more careful decision. Then provides uniformity. Right? As audit of financial statements is being carried out as per the standards. So whether PwC is doing the audit or KPMG, ENY, doesn't matter. There will be a uniformity right? regarding how the audit is done. Then it equips the professional accountants with the professional knowledge and the skill. And it also ensures the audit quality. Right, So one, it says it improves the quality of financial reporting. And second, it also ensures the audit quality. Right, so very important, you have to, now look at the drawing that I'm making over there. You have to learn it by heart. You say, my, my, my heart is not blue in color. So whichever color, yeah, I got that pen, so I'm writing with that color. So you have to learn it by heart. And after you put it in your heart, then after that, you also have to do the writing practice. Write it as if you're going to write it in the exam, not making the notes. And then write it as if you're going to write it in the exam. Right? So ensures, you know, and you have to write good sentences. It sets benchmark. Nay, nay. Ensures carrying out of audit against established benchmarks at par with the global practices. Improve quality of financial reporting, thereby helping users to make the diligent decision. Provide, promotes uniformity as audit is carried out as per the standards. Equips professional accountants with professional knowledge and skill and also ensures the audit quality. Right, so that is an important question which we've identified over there. If a three mark, four mark question comes in your exam, this is exactly what you're supposed to write in the answer. And you have to recreate it and then reprint it into your exam answer sheets. And okay, why are standards needed? Okay, and then duties. Right. What is the responsibility of the chartered accountant? Re duty of the CA is to follow these standards while doing the engagement. Right. Then if a particular engagement, a particular audit procedure could not be followed, then what you need to do? Perform the alternative procedure. We always have the rule. By hook, if not by hook, the, if by what do you say? You do it by hook. If not by hook, then by crook. You know, by hook or by crook. Right? So you have to do your work as per the standards. You're not able to follow a specific procedure. Then what you do, you perform the alternative procedure right? to achieve the purpose of that required procedure. Also, reason for departure has to be documented. Right? So you have to say why you did not follow that specific procedure, but an alternative procedure has to be documented. Then also draw attention to the departure. And mere disclosure in the report does not reduce. Absolve means does not reduce the responsibility of the accountant for complying with the auditing standards. So he says, yeah, yeah, I'm writing in my report. I did not follow 505. I did not follow 510. It says no. Just because you say, see, see I've been very honest. I've mentioned in my report. It says no. Like that mentioning in the report does not escape, you know, go away. So like an exam, there's a question asked on bank audit. And then you write over your dear examiner, I'm so sorry. But that's the one chapter which I left in option. That's why I'm not writing the answer. No. And then you not studying the chapter of bank audit and you mentioning it in the answer sheet, that's not going to serve the purpose. So you did not follow a particular auditing standard. And then you say, see, I'm being so honest. I'm writing it in my report. It says it does not absolve a professional accountant from complying with the engagement standard. 
right? It does not absolve a professional accountant from complying with the engagement standards, right? So it says it is their duty to see that standards are followed in the engagement. If not a specific procedure, then the alternative procedure. Also document the reason for departure, draw attention to the departure. And also just a mere disclosure will not absolve you from the responsibility of complying with the standards, okay? Right, and then after that, anyways, what you see over there is the question back okay right so have we completed this part in our discussion right now right so now we'll come to the discussion on the elements of the assurance engagement right so qualities and all that we come to it later but right now let us talk about the elements of an assurance engagement which is again a five-star question right which is again a five-star question over there Right, elements. Okay, what are the parts of an assurance engagement? What is an assurance engagement? I told you it increases the degree of confidence of the intended users. Right, and what are the elements? One three-party relationship. Whenever I read this three-party, three-party, it reminds me some surname called three-party. And so yeah, and I wonder like Pankaj Tripathi, right? So here it says three party, and so three party relationship. Then it talks about the subject matter, suitable criteria, sufficient appropriate evidence, and then a written assurance report. Right? So how many elements of an assurance engagement? Right? So when you have to give the degree of confidence to the intended users, it says you're doing an assurance engagement. So what are the elements of an assurance engagement? So what is the first element of the assurance engagement? Three-party relationship. Right? Three-party relationship. Then after that, it talks about the subject matter. Right? Then after the subject matter, the suitable criteria. Then after the suitable criteria, the sufficient appropriate evidence, right? The sufficient appropriate evidence and then a written assurance report, right? Then last point it talks about is a written assurance report, right? Written assurance report, right? The elements of an assurance engagement, right? So three party relationship, which are the three parties that they are talking about over here? One is obviously the practitioner, right? The CA who is performing the engagement, then the responsible party, which is nothing but the management and then the intended users, right? So three parties, who are the three parties over here? One, two, and three, right? So one is the practitioner right then second is the responsible party and third one is the intended users okay so like let me take the example of an audit and let me take the example of an audit because audit is an assurance engagement reasonable assurance engagement so there the practitioner will be called as the auditor and there the practitioner, and the person doing the audit will be called as the auditor. Then who is going to prepare the financial statements? The management. And the preparation of financial statements is the responsibility of the management. And who are the intended users? The shareholders. And then what is the subject matter? It is the financial statements. What you are auditing, you are auditing the financial statements. What you are auditing in the financial statements that whether the financial statements have been prepared by the responsible party in accordance with the AFRS. This we will study in SA 200 also. And the applicable financial reporting framework. Example, Indian Accounting Standards and Schedule 3. Okay, management, who is responsible to prepare financial statements? Management. How they should prepare financial statements? Keeping in mind their reporting framework, financial reporting framework. What would be an example? Accounting standards, schedule three. Then auditor, whether the subject matter has been prepared in accordance with the suitable criteria. For that, you need to obtain the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. And then auditor, you will issue the independent auditor's report in accordance with SA 700. Right? Independent auditor's report. Okay, right. So I've just given you the example of the audit. Okay, because audit is an example of an assurance engagement. 
Right, so three parties. Who are the three parties? Practitioner, responsible party, and the intended users. Then after that, subject matter. Okay, for whatever you are going to give the assurance on, that is your subject matter. Then what you're going to check in that subject matter is your suitable criteria. Then whether subject matter is in accordance with the suitable criteria, for that you need to obtain the sufficient appropriate evidence. And once you obtain the evidence, then you have to give your written assurance report. Report. Then practitioner, you have to give your written assurance report. Right. So certainly a new entry into your new syllabus, again, an important one was not there in your syllabus earlier. Right. So we mark it as an R raised to 10. That is read, revise 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 times. Right? 10 times before the exam. Right? So every time you finish reading at once, then you put one, one stick and then you draw these sticks in statistics, no, like that. And, and then you say that, yeah, yeah, I've finished studying it 10 times. Okay, right. So three party, who are the three party? Practitioner, responsible party and intended users. A practitioner is the person who gives the assurance, you know, like the auditor. The practitioner is a term broader than audit because only when you're doing audit, you are the auditor. But you could be doing the other assurance or related, what you say, related services is not assurance, but you could be doing review also. Right? So audit is related to historical information, whereas practitioner may provide assurance, not necessarily related to historical financial information. Then the responsible party is the party who is responsible for preparation of the subject matter. And intended users are the people for whom an assurance report is being prepared. This report may be to use the, yes, they may make use of the report in making the decision. Right, subject matter. It says it refers to the information which is being checked by the practitioner. So what you're going to do the checking of, say, financial statement. So that is your subject matter. Example, in an audit, it is going to be the financial statements while conducting the audit of financial statements suitable criteria it is the benchmark right to evaluate the subject matter so now i want to check the subject matter for that you need the criteria right so it's the standards guidance laws rules regulation like i told you afrs then it says sufficient appropriate evidence the practitioner performs an assurance engagement to obtain sae it is on the basis of the evidence that conclusions are arrived and an opinion is formed by the auditor. And we say sufficient, appropriate. So sufficiency refers to the quantity and appropriateness refers to the quality. Right? So obviously one evidence may be providing more comfort to the auditor than the other. So evidence providing more comfort is qualitative and therefore more appropriate. So evidence should be both sufficient and appropriate. It is not sufficient or appropriate evidence. Right? So quantity and quality both should be wrapped. And then it says it is the outcome you know, of the assurance engagement. Right? A written report is provided containing conclusions that conveys the assurance about the subject matter. Right. So everywhere our focus is on the subject matter. Right. So what does it say over here? The responsible party is responsible for preparing the subject matter. Right. Then the information being examined, that is the subject matter. Then you have the benchmarks to evaluate the subject matter. Then you want the sufficient appropriate evidence again regarding the subject matter right so you want the sufficient appropriate evidence right regarding the subject matter and then again what does it say you give the report right so report giving an assurance about the subject matter it is the outcome of an assurance engagement right so elements of an assurance engagement what are the elements of an assurance engagement three party relationship practitioner responsible party and the intended users then subject matter suitable criteria sufficient appropriate evidence and then the written assurance report right so subject matter it is the information to be examined Right, then suitable criteria, it is the benchmark for, to evaluate the subject matter. Right, then sufficient appropriate evidence to be obtained. And then this is the outcome, right, which is lead to a written assurance report. Right, it is the outcome of evaluating the subject matter against the suitable criteria. Right, so elements of an assurance engagement, right? Elements of an assurance engagement. Important question. One important question I told you, why standards are needed? 
you know, at par with global practices, uniformity, benchmark, quality, ensures quality, improves quality of financial reporting. And now another question over there is the elements of an assurance engagement. Right, the elements of an assurance engagement. Okay, right. And then after that, we have the examples and all. And then here you have the qualities of an auditor. So something left in between. Right. So we'll just look into look into that point of the qualities of an auditor. Right. So what does it say? What should be the qualities of an auditor? It says all those qualities that go into the making of a good business person also contribute to the making of a good auditor. Because ultimately, if I'm a practicing chartered accountant, that's my business to do audit, right? So it says tact, caution, firmness, it's good temper, integrity, discretion, judgment, industry, patience, clear headedness, reliability are some of the qualities which an auditor should have. So it says all that goes into the making of a good business person also contribute to the making of a good auditor. In addition to that, right, what does it say? He should be like a gemstone, you know, like the nine gemstones which we have. Right? So obviously, if he's like a gemstone, he'll have the shine of the culture right? for attaining a great height. Right? That in addition to the shine of the culture, all qualities of a good business person, he should be having the highest degree of the integrity backed by adequate independence. Right, so integrity, that is straightforward, honest and sincere. A person who is one in thought, word and action. Right, so backed by adequate independence. We have a big discussion regarding the independence of the auditor, that the judgment of a person is not subordinate to the wishes or direction of another person who might have engaged him or for his own self-interest. In addition to that, he holds a position of trust. So he needs to maintain the confidentiality. And he should also be technically be very strong. You know, so professional training and education. Some people, they have very good, what you say, uh, what do you say, personal skills, human skills. But if you don't have the technical skills, no use. Right? So professional training and education. Right? Then he should constantly be doing the review, critical review of the financial statements. And it's obviously useless for him to attempt that task unless his own knowledge is that of an expert. Right? So you should have expert level knowledge regarding the accounting and auditing. And exhaustive knowledge of accounting in all its branches is sin qua non. It's like, you know, a prerequisite right, for the practice of auditing. You don't have an exhaustive knowledge of accounting. It says nonsense. You cannot be a good auditor. And right? you must thoroughly know all the accounting principles and techniques. Right? So what is this? A question regarding the qualities of an auditor. Auditor is concerned with reporting on the financial matters. So financial matters are prone to human fallibility, errors, frauds are frequent. And that is why as an auditor, you should be having the all the qualities which a good business person has. Then you should also be having the shine of the culture. Then apart from that integrity, independence, you're holding a position of trust, right? So you should also have the, apart from the human qualities, also have the technical requirement of the professional training and education, right? Then you also have critical review of the financial statements and then an exhaustive knowledge of the accounting. Right? So that is the qualities of the auditor. And then I have completed this remaining part of the discussion also over there. Okay, so qualities of auditor, assurance engagement, types of assurance engagement, right? elements of an assurance engagement, meaning of an assurance engagement, and what is an engagement, that is what we started with. Okay, right. Now over here, they talk about a few simple questions, okay? types of audit. Right? So one audit, is it mandatory or is it voluntary? Right. So one, what does it say for companies? It is compulsory for them to get their accounts audited, right? If you are a company, but some entities, even if they are not a company under the tax laws, they are required to get their financial statements audited. Like if your turnover is exceeding one crore or receipts are exceeding 50 lakh or so, then it says under the tax laws, you may have to get the audit done. Sometimes you may also have to get an audit done when you want a grant or assistance from the government. So what we understand is audit is not always voluntarily. Sometimes it's not always mandatory. And then sometimes due to the advantages associated with an audit, you may voluntarily decide to get an audit done. Right? So basically, what are the types of audit that they are talking about over there? One audit which is mandatory. That means it is required by law. Which law? Company law, income tax law. Example, 
or it could be voluntary where there is no legal requirement for getting an audit done but due to the advantages because you want a grant because you want an assistance or because it is the internal rules of the partnership firm that is why voluntarily due to the advantages associated with a, a audit you get an audit done that is voluntary audit Right, so one, it could be audit required by law or it could be the voluntary audit, right? So mandatory or voluntary. Who appoints the auditor? Generally, the auditor is appointed by the owners. Like in case of a company, the auditor is appointed by the shareholders. Government company, the auditor is appointed by the CAD, the C and AG. Com controller, com controller, nahi. com controller and auditor general of India. Right. In case of a firm, the partner is appointed by the partners of the firm. In case of a government authority, the auditor could be appointed as required by the law regulation. Right, Auditor appointed under the tax laws by a government authority. Like income tax department, they could appoint the auditor for doing a special audit. Right. So generally, who appoints the auditor? The owners. Like in case of, but in case of government company, C and AJ, because government is the owner. In case of a firm, the partners of the firm. And sometimes even the government authority may appoint the auditor. Right. So rather than you know having the concern that, oh ma'am, these points are not seen through, better to go through them. Right. So appointment of the auditor. Then to whom does the auditor submit his report? To the persons who have made his appointment. Right. Those are the people to whom the auditor issues his report in case of company to shareholders, in case of firm to the partners who have engaged him. Okay. Right. So that is our discussion regarding the audit. Right. And then over here, now we have the question regarding benefits. But for that, I'll come to the beginning of the chapter and then we will come to the benefits of the audit. Yes, everyone. Are you with me? Tikre, tikre. Bhatkaitsa, physically basaitsa, but mentally bhatkaitsa, nine. Physically, mentally, emotionally, in all ways, right? You have to be thinking only of five alphabets in your life. A U D I T, auditor. All you do is ticker, 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 ticker. And then ticker, 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 ticker. And all you do is tick. And a green color tick is what is used by the auditor, right? So all you do is the tick, right? Why we don't tick like this? Why we tick like this? You say, ma'am, style. Yeah, one, you can say it to be style. And second, you know, if I tick directly, it overrides the number. So it says then the visibility of the number gets affected. So it's better if I tick like this. Number bhi kharab nahi hua. And then plus my checking is also done. And so that is why it's better that you have the reverse ticks in the audit. Okay. Right. So you see the CA logo also. It's got the reverse tick, right? And it also has the tricolor in it. Okay. Right. So let us come to the nature, objective, and scope of audit. That is our chapter number one. Right. So now it says, okay, why audit? Why financial statements? Right. So we are talking over here. Like I showed you that question over there. Okay. Advantages, benefits of an audit. Why audit is needed? And now, okay, now, you know, uh, now don't, uh, you know, I don't wish to, you know, uh, uh, torture you by drawing the picture of a car or something over here. So, but just imagine that this is a car over here, you know, whichever, like you say, ma'am, this is looking like a rat or something, whatever it is, you know, you just imagine that this is a car over here, you know, whatever, like this is a car over here. Okay. And now this is the car. And now in front of that car, if you just see these four circles over there, does the value of the car change? Like say there is a t-shirt and now, you know, let's say example, there is this particular t-shirt. Okay. And now the same t-shirt, I just put this one tick is there on that t-shirt. Does it change the value of that t-shirt? And like this, this t-shirt is say 200. A boat tick a gaya, to t-shirt ka value 2000 rupees ho gaya. And now this car normally say you would have got it for 7 lakh. Example. Now, but now because of the four circles, now that same car is for 70 lakh. You understand? No, say you're wearing a watch. And on that watch, if just there is this omega written over there. So say normally the watch is 5,000. But now just because the omega is written, the same watch becomes say for 5 lakh. Okay, 
right? That Omega logo, something like that. And right? that logo is there on the that watch over there now. Okay, so obviously, see, it changes the value. It changes the credibility, the value over there. So now, similarly, if I say, okay, come, see, these are the financial statements of a company, balance sheet, statement of profit and loss, cash flow statement, statement of changes in equity, and summary of significant accounting policies and the other explanatory information. This is the management. The management is responsible now. Preparation, presentation of financial statements. You see, see, management has prepared balance sheet, profit and loss, cash flow, notes, and all of that. Is it good? Is it useful? Is it beneficial? Yeah. But who has prepared it? Management. Has anybody checked it? No. Then are they that reliable? Are they that valuable? No. But same, these financial statements, if our CA uncle has checked, and now instead of financial statements, they become the audited financial statements. Now, on top of the financial statements, number one document is the independent auditor's report. And then after that, you see balance sheet, profit and loss, cash flow, as for CA, and then the notes. Oh my God, abhi 7 lakh ka 70 lakh value ho gaya. I know why, because now they are the audited financial statements. Hana? It's not only the t-shirt, it's the Nike t-shirt now. You understand that? So that is why it says certainly. I know you, I, you write your paper and I tell you, you only check your paper. You will give 80 out of 100. I know that is why you are not allowed to check your paper. You say, ma'am, 80 is also less. I will get 120. Okay, that is why maker checker has to be different. Okay, if you have written your paper, now your work is over. Now let the examiner check your paper. Similarly, management responsible party, you have prepared financial statements, take care. Now let our auditor do the audit and give an audit report on these financial statements. And express an opinion as to whether or not the financial statements give a true and fair way. And now express an opinion as to whether or not they give a true and fair view. Right? So obviously, these financial statements, this auditor's report, these audited financial statements, and AFS is what? Audited financial statements. To whom are they beneficial? It says, you know, I am telling you, getting your financial statements audited, Getting an auditor's report on the financial statements, it is a gift. And a gift. You want me to draw a gift? You say, ma'am, yeah, yeah, ma'am, you're drawing, you know. It adds humor to the class. You say, ma'am, okay, this is not bad. Okay, a gift. And a, it's a gift. To whom? To the shareholders and to the investors. Getting an audit done of your financial statements, it says it's a bakshisa, bakshisa. And it's a gift to the shareholders and to the investors. Who is there in the gift? One, you have the government. Can government can levy the taxes based on the audited financial statements. Then it's a gift to the insurance companies because they can settle the insurance claims based on the audited financial financial statements. Then it's a gift to the financial institutions and the bankers. I know why? Because they can decide, assess your credit worthiness of the company based on the audited financial statements. Then also the trade unions, they can settle and negotiate for the increase in their trade for India wages based on the audited financial statements. And our workers have gone on strike. Hamari mange puri karo, hamari mange puri karo. They say, hamara salary 20% bada ho, nahi toh hum kaam nahi karega. To bolte nahi hai company ke paas paisa. To phir wo bolte kaise nahi hai paisa. So bolte ye dekho. Look at the financial position. Right? So for settling, for having negotiation, peace talks with the trade union, also for shareholders, for decision making, you know, for assessing the performance of the company and investors for their investment decision. Right? So that is why we say, what is the importance over there? It's a gift, 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 gift to the shareholders and to the investors. 
right? So what do we say? Be it investors, desirous of investing their money in the company, shareholders, anxious to know about the financial position of the company they've invested in, banks or financial institutions willing to lend funds to credit worthy organization, government desirous of collecting taxes from trade and industry in accordance with law, trade unions negotiating with corporate management for better wages, or insurance company wanting to settle the property claims caused by fire the device disaster range of diverse users and equally diverse fields may rely on the audited financial statements so audited financial statements provide confidence and assurance to users who make their decisions on the basis of such audited financial statements so it's a gift to the shareholders and the investors and later on if i come to the question of the if i come to the uh -huh. Right, later on, if I come to the right question of the right of the benefits of audit, why an audit is needed, even there, what we have that it's a gift to the shareholders and to the investors, right? So, again, we can write it's a gift to the share, uh -huh. right? It's a gift to the shareholders and to the investors right so it says the high quality information right then also it gives confidence to the users that the information that they are relying is qualitative and in case of company shareholders may not be involved in day-to-day -day affairs right so interest is safeguarded by audit then moral check on employees so you can also add the employees trade union ka point over here you know employees it can moral check on employees from committing frauds for the fear of it being discovered by audit then government authority authorities for determining tax liabilities, lenders, bankers for making their credit decision whether to lend or not to lend to a particular party. Then audit may also detect fraud, error or both. And an audit may also review the existence and operation of the controls operating in an entity. So it also gives you high quality information. Also, it helps to detect fraud, error or both and also to check the operations of the controls in an entity. And so these are additional points. And apart from that, you can use your points of the gift to the shareholders and the investors, right? You can use your points of the, it's a gift to the shareholders and to the investors. Okay, right. So that is completion of our discussion over there, right? Regarding the, right? Regarding the advantages of an audit or why an audit is needed. What are the benefits of the auditing? Okay, then there is an introductory discussion over there regarding the origin of auditing, you know, from where, like they say first there were dinosaurs and then dinosaurs, then there were these different, uh, you know, they say Neanderthal and all of that, Homo sapien, sapien and all of that. And then finally, the human being got created. And similarly, from where did this concept of audit start? Right, so it says it started right from the time of the Kautilya's Arthashastra. Right, even in the in the fourth century BC, then you know, before Christ, it talks about fixed accounting year, a process for closure of accounts and audit for the same. Right, so the concept of periodic checking and verification existed even in those times. Right, and even there are references in his monumental work to misstatements and financial statements due to abuse of power. Right, so that is the ancient reference of the audit. You know, okay, where did this concept of audit start? Right, from the Kautilya Arthashastra in the fourth century BC. Right, so again, there could be an MCQ in the exam that Kautilya Arthashastra in the fourth century BC refers to which times of the auditing. So it says ancient times, medieval times, recent times, or the or in, what you say, some particular golden times. Right, so you have to say they talk about the ancient times. And then in medieval times, now they talk about the concept of audit in the industrial revolution, wherein they said that the word audit has derived from the Latin word audere, which means to hear, to listen. Like we say, you know, audio CD, you know, audio. So audio is something what you listen. So originally how audit used to be done, you know, olden times, how audit used to be done, one person used to do the accounting, he used to tell the other person how he's done the accounting, and I used to listen to that. And by listening, I used to say that whether it was right or wrong. So today's time, you can't go to Tata Motors and tell them, oh, you tell me how you've done accounting, I will listen. Now it has undergone a change, but that was the concept. Okay, one person has done the work, other person comes, and he listens to whatever work you have done. 
right? So in medieval times, auditor used to hear the accounts, read out to them to check that employees were not careless and negligent. Industrial revolution in Europe led to astronomical expansion in volume of trade and consequently the demand of the auditors. Right? So that was ancient times, then the medieval times, and then you come to the recent times. Coming to the more recent history, what does it say? It's the first auditor general, C and A G, you know, Comptroller and Auditor General of India, was appointed in British India in 1860, having both the accounts and the auditing functions. Then it says later on, an audit office of the Auditor General was given the statutory recognition. And presently, the CNDG is doing the audit of the government receipts and expenditure. And so this is all regarding the government audit, the C and AG. And now what does it say? ICAI was set up as a statutory body under an act of parliament in 1949 for regulating the profession of chartered accountancy in the country. Right, so then it was CNDG. Then after that, also a separate statutory body was established for regulating the profession of chartered accountancy in the country. Right, so that is the ICAR. Right, so ancient times, medieval times, and the recent time. Recent time is also 1860. And wherein in British India, the first CNDG of India was appointed. Right, during the British times. Right, so if I come over here. Hmm, to, you know, like C A C A G G O V dot N, right? C A G dot G O V dot N. And uh, if I go for English language over there, and if I come to the you know, past, see former CNAGs of India, right? Then it says these have been the CNAGs of India. And then here it sees, say, Edmund Drummond. Hello, oh, yes, 1860 to 1862. So that's what is written in our books. 1860, and in British India, the first CNAG Auditor General of India was appointed. And then you had this Harrison and Westland and Waterfield and all of them. And then after that, right, this was still 1940. Right, and then after that, you have these ones which have now been appointed as the CNDG of India, right? So what is the origin of auditing? It talks about the ancient times, then about the medieval times, and then about the recent times, okay? And then after that, we come to the meaning and nature of the auditing, right? So I'm sure you would have done some introductory uh, understanding of audit either by some regular class of any faculty doesn't matter or you would have done some self-study of the subject of audit and now you would have decided to attend a fast track so you would have come across this beautiful definition of audit what does it say audit is an con hai audit it says audit is an independent examination and so it has to be independent maker checker has to be different of financial information, financial information, financial statements of any entity. No, no. So any entity, whether profit oriented or not, irrespective of its size or legal form. Right? When such an examination is being conducted with a view to expressing an opinion thereon. Right? So what is audit? It is an independent examination. Of what financial information, which is nothing but your financial statements, which are prepared on the basis of the BUA, BUA books of account, and a BOA, books of account of a company, cash book, trading account, balance sheet, cost records, if central government prescribes, of any entity, whether profit oriented or not. So it could be a Section 8 company or a not Section 8 company. It could be an entity having a turnover of 1 crore or 1 lakh crore or its legal form. It could be company, it could be firm, it could be LLP, it could be sole proprietor, it could be association of person, it could be artificial jurisdictional person, any. And it could be private, public, listed, unlisted, any. It could be cooperative society, irrespective of its legal form, any entity. And when such an examination, Q kiya ja raha hai, this independent examination of financial information, it says in order to express an opinion thereon. Right? So that is the definition of the audit, right? That audit is an independent examination of financial information of any entity, 
whether profit oriented or not, irrespective of its size or legal form, when such an examination is being conducted with a view to expressing an opinion thereon. Right. So audit is an independent examination of financial information. Independence means what? Your judgment, your decision making is not a subordinate to the wishes or directions of another person who has engaged you. And so act objectively without creeping in any biases. Otherwise, the entire purpose of audit will get defeated. If it is not an independent examination of any entity, it could be NGO, charity, will institution, LLP, private company, public company, society, or trust. And what is the purpose? To express an opinion on the financial statements by issuing a written audit report. And then how do I check that these financial statements which management responsible party has prepared, that they do not mislead anybody? You know, okay, these financial information, financial statements which management has prepared, should it be misleading? No, it should not be misleading. So how can I check that it is not misleading? One, I need to check that whether these financial statements have been prepared based on the entries in the books of account. Then these entries in the books of account are supported by sufficient appropriate evidence. Then none of the entries have been omitted. Right? None have been omitted. Right? So one, the accounts are prepared based on the entry. Then these entries are supported by the adequate document. Then none of the entries have been omitted. And then it says the information given in the financial statement should be clear, unambiguous. It should not be like jelly. It should be like water. It should be unambiguous, clear, transparent. Right? The amount should be properly classified, described, disclosed in accordance with the accounting standard. And the statement of account should show a true and fair picture, true and fair view picture of the operational results, that is profit and loss, and assets and liabilities, that is balance sheet. Right? So what does it say? Okay, what is your objective? To express an opinion. So now what you want to check is these financial statements are not misleading. When would you say that they are not misleading? When the financial statements are prepared based on the entries in the books of account. Many company management to prepare financial statements, they say, please, we don't require books of account. Do you think that such financial statements which are prepared without using the books of account will give a true and fair view? Never. You say, no, no, you just tell me how much profit, how much tax I will prepare, you take it from me. No. The account should be prepared based on the entries in the books of account. Now, again, entry should not be bogus. And it should not be sitting, sitting, what to do? Pass, pass journal entry, pass bogus entry. No, entry should be supported by the sufficient appropriate evidence. Then you did not purchase any asset. You did not make any sale. But what do you do? Bogus entry recording. So none of the entries should be omitted. Or, you know, you made 20 purchases, only 10 purchases you recorded, 10 purchases shh, omitted. Right? Then what does it say? The information given in the financial statement should be transparent. It should be properly classified, described and disclosed, CDD. And it should give a true and fair picture of the operational as results and the assets and liability. Right? So that is the part of the discussion regarding the a definition of the auditing. Okay, right. So we'll take a break now. Then after the break, we'll complete with our discussion on chapter number one. And then we shall proceed with our further discussion, right? So we'll do introduction, essay 200 times. Then after that, I told you, I'll take you to engagement letter and also the audit report. Okay, right. So first things first, let us first complete, just take a break and then complete with the chapter number one. Okay, right. So time for our 